Welcome to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from Zero to Hero, module 6.3, dealing with ransomware via Sentinel automation. Initially on this video, I will run a WannaCry ransomware on my three devices in order to create a few alerts in a single incident. And then I will show some information in regards to the automation I created using Sentinel playbooks and logic apps as well. Then I will dive into the Sentinel incident investigation. And then from there, I will push a magic button using the playbooks where I can, in a single click, isolate every single device related to this could be a terrible incident regarding to a ransomware attack. Anyway, let's dive into it. Okay, let's get things moving. First, I will run uh, WannaCry in one of my devices. To buy a bit of time, I already run on the other two devices. And here they are. I'm using three VMs, Windows 10 23, Windows 10 26, and then a uh, Server 2016 06 as well. Anyway, though the WannaCry will generate a few alerts, and then I will quickly show how to find those alerts into the, uh, the uh, security portal. Please make sure you watch my other videos where I, I do a kind of deep dive into that. And today is going to be more around Azure. Anyway, let's get things moving. First, let me just dive into one of the devices in here. Yeah, I have here the WannaCry uh, in a uh, in encrypted file, in the, sorry, password, password protected file. Let me just open this guy in here. And now let me drag and drop to here just to force it to open. I will copy the file. The file is password protected. Okay, and then I need to run as quick as possible just to generate, oops, password is wrong. Sorry about that, let's try again. Okay, should work now. Okay, that's great. And then let me just straight away to run. Uh, okay, and then of course, because this device is fully protected, the Defender for Endpoint managed to, to block the execution and prevented any kind of uh, malicious things to happen on this device. Just, you know, as part of my investigation, please remember, uh, this is the, the exe file. Of course, don't need to memorize everything. Just, you know, remember part of the, the number ED01 and so on is an exe file. Okay, just to provide the names I'm using, this is my Windows 10 23. As you can see, a uh, ping, I left a ping running because as part of the automation in a single cli uh, click, I want to isolate all of these devices, part of the incident. Then if I jump now to this device here, yeah, this is my server 2016-06, the ping is running here as well. And then my last one is my Windows 10 uh, 26. Okay, and the ping is running here as well. Okay, that's it for now. Now let me just uh, quickly, yeah, this is, you know, the three VMs. Let me, before I start talking about the, the, you know, automation and all of those things, let me just double check if the alerts are already there. Because I run the WannaCry a few minutes ago, the alerts should be here already. If I click on the alerts, yeah, there you go. Here, as you can see, WannaCry, WannaCry, and the devices are in here, 26, 23, in the Windows Server as well. Okay, that's fine. From the security portal, looks good. If I go into the security incidents, and then same story, I have some other bits uh, happening here from the Defender for Identity, but that's not part of my presentation right now. Yeah, now if I just, uh, yeah, please remember, an incident is a collection of alerts. Again, because these three alerts are related to WannaCry, again, on my three devices, they were added into a single incident, okay? That's fine. And then please, you know, watch my other video to understand how you could use the security portal to do a deep dive investigation. Anyway, let's keep uh, things moving. Now, what, what I want to explain is just to provide a bit of uh, information in regards to the automation I created on Azure in the automation I created on the Logic Apps. Okay, to do that, I need to jump into my Azure portal. Okay, if you are new, yeah, please remember the place to go is into the, the portal.azure.com. And then, yeah, in here, if you can't see the Azure straight away, you can, uh, uh, sorry, if you can see the Sentinel there, just type Sentinel in here, and then you can quickly jump into the Microsoft Sentinel. 
Okay, that's fine. I already created, you know, the whole configuration is in there. And now uh, the place for me to go is into the automation. Okay, if I click in here, yeah, here is the place where we can create all the playbooks. If you are new, you can always, you know, have a look on the uh, uh, playbooks uh, templates. If you have a look in here, yeah, there are, you know, some examples how you can, you know, how you can use them. In my case, I already created the, some of the automation in here. In here, I have uh, three uh, automation rules I already created. And for now, I will concentrate on the first one. Isolate, sorry, MDE, isolate device. If I click in there, a few bits I already did. I first created the condition, okay, in here. And I want, you know, the, the, the system to detect if there is any alerts where the title contains a ransomware or malware or ransom. And then very important in order to, to, to play this automation later on, here is the place where I have a couple of actions I can take in terms of, you know, changing the, the status, assigning ownership and so on. But in my case, I'm, I'm selected run a playbook. And then I have a playbook called isolate MDM VM. And then actually this is a playbook coming from, uh, sorry, this automation comes from the Azure Logic Apps, where actually I created the action to isolate every single device related to the incident, in this case, uh, to the WannaCry, okay? And then I could do some other bits as well, for example, to send an email to the, uh, sorry, to assign this incident to my SOC analyst teams and so on. But anyway, for now, uh, the most important is I have an, an Azure automation uh, 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 linked to a uh, logic apps I already created and I will show in two minutes. And then, yeah, I could say here, I could do that configuration only valid for the next 30 days or a week or so on. But in my case, you know, I want that forever. And the status for now is fully enabled. Okay. Anyway, that's the story from here. If I just cancel. Now, the other bit I need to show is if I go to the, to the logic apps, Okay, just, you know, search in there, if I click in here, and then again, just to buy a bit of time, now I'm not into the Azure automation anymore, now I'm talking about the Azure apps. And then in here, I created um, um, an Azure apps called Isolate MDE VMs, or VM. If I click in there, the best place to go is on the Logic App Designer, if I click in here, and then here are exactly what are the steps and the action I want to take. As you can see, I started with the element here, Microsoft Sentinel incident, when there is an incident, and then I want to get all the hosts related to that incident. And this is absolutely brilliant because if there is a, a, a ransomware attack, in this case, WannaCry on three, uh, devices like my lab here or 3000 with the automation we can target every single device in that incident and then from here for each of those devices found into the incident i created a condition and the condition in here is uh, isolate the device of course there are so many other things we can do but right now i want to concentrate into the the isolate the devices linked to that alert under a single incident, okay? Okay, that's pretty much it for now from this side. If I just go in here, okay, I already did, in the, uh, I already showed, uh, quite, kind of, you know, quick show how to find the alerts in the incidents under the security portal. But anyway, now let's have a quick look into how I could investigate those alerts the, into the Sentinel. And then finally, how with a single button, I can make sure all those devices are fully isolated to, in this case, avoid, avoid the WannaCry to spread on my organization. Okay, now the place I need to go back is into uh, Sentinel. Okay, let me go back to Azure Sentinel in here. Yeah, this is my configuration done. And yeah, as you can see, because I run the, the I run the WannaCry on three devices, as you can see in here, there is a new incident, or actually three new incidents uh, created. And then the best thing to do is dive into the incidents themselves. If I click in here, yeah, as you can see on the top, I can change 
I want to focus now only the incidents from the last 24 hours, 48 hours, and so on. And then as you can see, the top one here is the WannaCry ransomware incident. There are three alerts because I run WannaCry in those three devices. And then the best thing to do is if I click in there now. Now here on the left, I can see all the elements related to that incident. If I just try to click in here, yeah, as you can see one more time, Windows 10 23 is there, my device server 06, and Windows 26 is in there, and all the files, in this case, the, the WannaCry payload. The best thing to do is let me click on view full details, click in here. Okay, yeah, here now is much better for me to see. As you can see on the, because the first time when I played with the WannaCry was back on a few days ago on July uh, 18th, and because today I run the WannaCry again, actually it went into the same uh, already created incident, okay? Here on the top, let me just assign this incident to my SOC, let's say manager called Alex, okay, he is now applied uh, to him. The incident in here, yeah, for the moment, because it's brand new, it says new, I could say, you know, yeah, let's set as an active because I'm working now and doing the investigation in there. Then click to active. And then in here, yeah, you know, you could be maybe just wondering, uh, WannaCry in ransomware is a really serious threat. How come Microsoft is, is uh, have set only as a severity level, only as a medium? Okay, and then of course I could come in here and set to high. Okay, probably the answer for that is because the WannaCry was fully remediated, the file from the desktop was deleted and the WannaCry itself never run, it was prevented. This is why the status didn't go to high severity and go only medium. But of course, you know, I have the flexibility in here and change. Okay, one more time here. Yeah, three alerts regarding this incident. And here I could just click and then get some more information one more time to understand what are all the entries related to the alerts and incident. In this case, the payload, the file hashes, all the devices and so on. And again, some uh, interesting information here. What you know, should I do? What are the best remediation steps in order you know, to cope with this, uh, this alert? And here, if I click on entries, and here again, I have all the file hashes now, the file hash one, MD5 and the 256 for the exe. When I try to run the WannaCry, all the devices related to, to, to that incident. And then if I click in any of those entries, you know, let me click on the file itself on the WannaCry uh, payload. If I click in there, I can see now from where that file was launched. Uh, if you can remember from my example, I try to drag and drop the file into desktop and I run from there. I can see straight away. I can see as well what is the timeline related to the WannaCry. Yeah, today is the 23rd and you know, here is the, is the time. In anyway, let's say for now I had enough, you know, I had enough, uh, I have now enough information to understand this is a serious business, WannaCry, ransomware in three different devices. That's really not great. And now is where the magic really can happen. Here on the top, I have the incident actions. And then in here, I could run a playbook. I could create an automation rule based on you know, all those elements, or I could create a team. In my case, what I really want to do now, because you know, WannaCry is serious enough, I can click on run a playbook, and now I have all the playbooks available on my organization. You know, could be different things. In my case, what I want to do now is to fully isolate every single device related to this incident. I could have, you know, other actions in here as well. You could be wondering, uh, I could set those actions uh, based on different conditions to happen automatically. But in my case, I just kind of, you know, wanted to show all the steps for you in where I can go and push the button manually. As you can see in here, my devices are still, you know, the ping is still running well. They are fully, you know, they are still connected. And now by the time I push the button, okay, in here, let me run uh, the, the isolated device. 
Based on my experience, usually on Windows 10, the, the isolation works a little bit faster than Windows Server 2016. Yeah, as you can see, my device, let me just have a quick look in here. Yeah, my device 26 is already isolated. If I dive into my other device, my server is still uh, running. And if I go to my third device, as you can see, you know, is still fully, sorry, is fully isolated. As I just mentioned, on Windows 10 and Windows 11, it runs, yeah, it took probably, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe to do the isolation. And server is still, you know, is still running in here. Usually, you know, based on my previous labs, previous experience can take maybe one or two minutes. Okay, and so on. Anyway, just to buy a bit of time, I will take note of the time. Uh, let me pause this video for a moment. And then when the device is, uh, is isolated, I will come back to show to you. Yeah, anyway, as you can see, I'm back on my server 2016. It took probably 40 more seconds uh, since I paused the video. And now my server 2016 is fully isolated as well. Okay. Anyway, now if I go to my uh, portal, let me just go back here to the portal. Uh, yeah, that's it. Now from, from the Sentinel itself, let's say for the moment, I'm okay, and then, you know, let's say I perform the full investigation in terms of making sure the file is deleted from the device and so on. And then when I'm happy with the, you know, the, the remediation, I could come in here and say, yeah, that's fine. I let me close, okay, this alert and move to the next one if there is any, okay. I could say in here, uh, actually, yeah, that was a, a true uh, positive. Okay, in here, and you know, let's say fully, fully remediated, and so on. Okay, click on okay, and then you know, job done uh, from here. Of course, I could have another playbook, maybe just to bring the devices back, but just to show the way you know it works if you don't have a second playbook, what I need to do now is to go to my back to security.microsoft.com and then go over the devices and then uh, I need to go now device by device and release those devices from isolation. Okay, if I start with my Windows 10 23, okay, let me just click in here. Again, I could now uh, from here have a look on the incidents and alerts and so on. But anyway, I already done that so many times on other videos. Now let me just jump straight away on uh, on those three um, more options, clicking the three dots, sorry. And then from here, as you can see, release from isolation, uh, device 1023. If I click in there, let's say fully oops, remediated. Okay, let me just buy a bit of time. Click on okay. Now, if I go back to my device 23, this one here, yeah, as you can see, is fully back in business. And then let me know, let me do exactly the same on my device. The other one is the 26. Yeah, same story, click in here. Now let me select device, where is device 26? Yeah, here, and then yeah, same story. Let me click straight away on those three dots. Yeah, release from isolation. Just a quick tip. Sometimes if you do that too fast, if you do the isolation, come back and then uh, into here, you might see this option as grayed out. Okay, the only thing you need to do, just make sure you do a full page refresh and then the button will be available again. If I click on release, same story, fully remediated, click on confirm. Now, if I dive back to my device 26, yeah, device is back on business again. And then hopefully I can do the same, I'm sure I can do the same on my server 2006 06, if I have a good memory. Okay, yeah, here's the guy, server 2016 06. Yeah, same story, if I click, yeah, I can see straight away the status uh, in here as isolated at the moment. And then I can go, same story, click in there, and then release from the isolation. Again, it might take a few more seconds in order for the release isolation to come back. But anyway, let's see if I dive back now to my server 
Uh, actually, that was uh, pretty much straightforward enough. Anyway, yeah, based on my experience on, on Windows 10, usually the isolation in release, the isolation goes straight away. If you do from the page or if you push the button via Azure Automation in servers 2012, 2016, uh, um, usually takes a little bit more seconds, uh, you know, as I, you could see before, maybe 14, 60, 60 additional seconds to be fully in uh, back in business. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I just uh, finish. I run the WannaCry and then I left those three devices pinging. I, di I did the full investigation. Eventually, thanks to the uh, playbook, um, created on top of the logic apps, I was able have uh, to have a magic button where I, where I click the isolation and then eventually all the devices, on my case, three devices, they were straight away fully isolated to avoid, in this case, the WannaCry to spread. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show in this video, how you can use Defender for Endpoint, Azure Sentinel and Logic Apps working together in order to create automation. I hope you enjoyed. If so, please give a quick like, subscribe my channel, please follow me on LinkedIn and see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.